Magandang araw, oras na para sa pinakabagong balita sa lagay ng panahon at sa mundo ng science and technology. Ako po si Jal Miranda and we welcome you to DOS TV, Science for the People. The only one of its kind in Southeast Asia, the Axis Knee Replacement System, is an affordable knee system in the Philippines used for surgical procedures on patients with knee arthritis with funding from the Department of Science and Technology, Philippine Council on Health, Research and Development or DOST PCHRD. The Axis Knee Replacement System was developed by a team spearheaded by internationally renowned surgeon Dr. Ramon B. Gustillo from Negros Occidental to hayan kung paano tinulungan ng knee access or Axis Knee Replacement ang ating mga kababayan dito lang sa Sinisiensya. I was born with in a family of seven children. My father was uh, Jose and Consuelo, were uh, farmers, sugarcane farmers, but very small. We have five hectares of land. And so we consider ourselves poor. We work in the Hacienda and the farm. Uh, I was watching carabaos and all of those. Uh, in fact, the, the uh, carabao in front of the building has a story of itself because I was watching carabaos during uh, summer or during week weekends. And at that time when I fell down from a carabao on the land and I was crying, I said, I'll never be this poor watching stupid carabaos. By the time I was seven or eight years of age, I think I always wanted to be a doctor, <laughs> even at that time. When Dr. Montoya from DOST asked me, Dr. Castillo, can we develop, can we, because he knows I, I'm interested in research and development. Can we do something for Filipinos? Then the thing that comes to my mind right away is the knee system. For two reasons. One, it's very expensive in the Philippines. And we will are trying, how can we solve the problem? And second, there are not enough orthopedic surgeons in the Philippines who can do it. Half of them, I train them in the States, but in a population of 103 million, you need a lot of orthopedic surgeons to know how to do this system. Through a meeting with Dr. Ramon Gustilo, who's a world-famous orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Ramon Gustilo is a U.S.-based Filipino orthopedic surgeon who has done a lot in the area of orthopedic medicine. And one of his... Uh, Milestone achievements is actually the development of uh, implants, which are now currently patented and being used in the U.S. But this time, he wanted to develop a knee implant that is for the Filipino. And he actually approached us with this uh, concept and uh, development initiative that they, he would like to develop a knee implant for Filipinos because he knew that currently there is no available 
knee implant in the Philippines that was actually manufactured in the Philippines. Not to mention the exorbitant cost of having a knee implant, which cost about almost a million pesos, all in all, including the surgical fee. So when we discussed that and we saw the prospects of this not just being helpful to the Filipino people in terms of uh, people who would need the knee implant, but as far as his commercial viability, we decided to partner with him. The interesting thing with this uh, partnership is that the, the government will be investing in the research and development process that will improve on this knee implant. And I, I am very proud to say that this is the first time that it happened, that the government is co-investing with a private company in the research and development field. So uh, we took a lot of risk for this particular knee implant. We had a lot of discussions before it was actually approved by the our governing council. But more importantly, I think, it was the support of Secretary Mario Monteo which made this possible. Because if he was not enthusiastic about the whole project, this would not have been um, as fast as uh, now. So we're truly happy for his support and he gave us the go signal. And after, what, almost two years, we're now with this knee implant that is now being produced uh, in the plant of uh, Dr. Gustilo in Cabuyao. And they're now looking at imports, in, uh, exports, sorry, exports to other countries. And to me, that is Philippine technology developed by Filipino scientists. And it's a, he has a very good uh, core of engineers uh, who is his team, support team in the development of this uh, knee implant. So he, this company is Orthopedic International, and they're very competent uh, engineers and orthopedic doctors who made this possible. So we're truly proud of it. And it will really bring down the cost of uh, knee implants by 50%, 40 to 50%, so which will be of great benefit to many Filipinos who are not able to get implants because of the exorbitant cost. Do you know that there are about 70,000 patients who require knee replacement every year? 70,000. But because it's so expensive, we can only do like 1,000 a year. This is 69,000. Magtitiis na lang yun. Nag-start ang akong tuhod sakit. 1983. Dere. Sakit. Isa lang. Isa lang kalig niya. Isa lang kalig niya. Kaso, hindi gina ko man gina pa doktor ko man sa tinda mga pain reliever lang na bandi nung nakubulo. Nung pawan man siya. Pero hindi madala sa bulong. Nagtapok kit sa di. So, Yun, amat-amat sa amat-amat sa nga do. Nagkamuno. Nagdeform gid sa tubo. Kabudlay gid. Magtinda ko doon, hindi ko katay, hindi ko katindog, dali. Hindi ko kabilis, hinay lang, hinay na yun, ano pa, manukad pa ko, <laughs> mabuylo pa. Kabudlay gid, sa ako, hindi ka, hindi ko kagiho, kaayo. Limitado gid akong giho. Kapin pa kung wag ano nang try this. Natinda lang kayo, ang misis ko naman, uh, ano, nagatinda na. So wala pa siya na operahan, budlay gid kaayo sa iya-iya nga pang giho, hindi siya kalakat maayo. Gasakripisyo, ah, gas, gasakit ang iyang mga tuhod, nga eh, hindi agid makaya. Jaina, she's a late four year old. She has a problem for the last 12, 13 years. She has not been walking too much. She's primarily in the chair and stand up and walk. Uh, she has knees that are very deformed. It's not osteoarthritis. Probably she even be either gout or rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, his knees are going uh, outward. Because we use our knees for the, the whole, our whole lives, we have wear and tear of the knees. When you walk, when you and I walk, our weight is bare from the center of the hip joint, the center of the knee, and the center of the ankle. As we age, the the wear 
exceeds the repair of the knee. The problem with the arthritis of the knee, the wearing away, it's a permanent thing. When the cartilage disappears, no amount of medicine or injections will permanently cure him. So it's really uh, restricted his quality of life for the next 10 or 12 years. And she doesn't have money to be uh, done. Okay, Bong, ipapasa yung, yung bola dito sa taas, ha? Tapos, nung drive ka dito sa gitna... Ilang Newtons, Coach? Newtons? Newtons of force. Pag dalayap ako, yung amount of force na ibibigay ko ay dapat directly proportional sa height ng arc o trajectory at sa distance na tinitravel ng bola. Pampisa ito. Apply now as a Philippine Science High School Scholar. Download the form at pshs.edu.ph. Deadline of applications is on September 1, 2017. first place, in order to answer that problem, you have to know, at least in medicine, you have to know what the problem is. Like, for instance, a broken bone now. If you break your bone, your thigh bone or leg bone, it takes four to six months to heal. Okay? How about if we develop something that we did would heal in six weeks? See, that's innovation. That changes the life of the patient. The new system that we develop is the way. So, when I have, with Dr. Montoya and I approached, I said, we have to solve the problems of total knee replacement, alignment, and how to make it uh, affordable, quality preserved and yet affordable. And I think we addressed both those problems. DOST with PCHRD will help. Uh, Dr. Gustilo, so they put in some money, Dr. Gustilo put in money, and together we built up the research, and the research became production and manufacturing. Now we're using it clinically. Axis knee is a hardware, actually, it's an implant. An implant to replace damaged parts. It is designed to replace a worn out knee. This is the human knee. Knee cap, thigh bone, leg bone. And the knee moves like that. At the end of the bone is cartilage. This is the blue thing. The tips, well, both of them have cartilages. Cartilage is tough, it does not have any sensation. So when we move, when we walk, it's like a good padding. As you age, 
this padding wears away, it becomes thin, eventually it disappears. When this disappears, it will be bone on bone. And when we walk on bone on bone, sa, sa Tagalog yun, nagbuto sa buto, masakit yun. That's very painful. There is no medicine that you can take to replace this. Like a broken brake pad, worn out, you cannot put oil to make it better. You have to replace it. Axis knee is a way of replacing this worn out pad. And essentially, the, the procedure cuts the the end part of our joint that is damaged, that means the cartilage that's worn out. You cut them off and replace it with metal and plastic in a correct alignment and correct stability, what we call ligamentous stability. The worn out cartilage, you just have to shape it off. Once you shape it off, the axis knee or, or implants like that, you put bone cement and you stick it in the bone. At the end, the tip or the end of this bone will have metal. The end of this bone will have, it's a special kind of uh, plastic. And together, when you move, there will not be any bone on bone contact. So the patient can walk without pain. Longevity of knee system, if properly done, it should last 25 to 30. Easy. because the plastic wear, it's wear plastic, it's, you only wear 0.02 zero, zero, millimeter per year, so it lasts for a long time. We calculated the thickness of the plastic, it can easily last for many years. And we have several patients, some here and some in the States, that are now 25 years, because they are well aligned, they still function. To do a knee in the States, at least thirty thousand dollars per knee. Here we can do it for five to six thousand easily, and that covers everything: covers the implant, covers the professional fee, covers the hospital. Uh, for indigent, <laughs> but when we for indigent patients now, but we try to work. For really indigent patients, we just keep it there. You know, I can't tell you frankly how hurt it was. But all of a sudden, he just showed up on the clinic and uh, with his knees and his from So I don't know how he came to us. So he's the first access knee system that we have done both knees, one at a time. Maybe they just takot pag uh, nagkakilala ko si Dr. Destino. Dula, miss me gamay wala ko natakot. Okay. Muna sabi sa akin ni ano, ni Dr. Atan nga siya lang ang doktor nga maka-repair si na. Uh, April 11, 2015. Uh, binopirahan ako yung uh, alas 6 sa aga ni sulod ko sa operating room. So gin ano ko ni Dr. Hinko, ni anesthesia. Wala mong ipatulong, ata mo lang po. Galantaw mo lang po sa ilang pirahan ko. Tapos yung mga... Dugay-dugay na yung pirah. Do almost you know, two hours to three hours. He didn't... We didn't charge him. I didn't charge him professionally. It's all free. The only thing that we charge, because the government requires it, yung implant. The implant is half the price. You know. He has failed health, so it it uh, it uh, pays for his uh, no, hospital bill. So after operation, then I can I can find the sa kwan sa and then sa kwan room. Gin ano na ko gin pagkaaga. Gin nag 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 nagtayo na ko. Nagamit ako na walker. Nag walker ko mga dali man lang walker. Yes, there's you can walk. You can stand right away. You know. 
because the, we put something in there that controls the pain for the next 48 hours. But the, the amazing, the difference amazing, with the bilateral knee last week, the following day, she was already standing, and we did both knees. Ang kalipay, hindi maabot sa langit nga nakabalik sa sang lakat nga insakto. Ang lang na agit akong mahambal. Maragit nga kalipay nga na insakto ang kwa ni Ronald nga abi ko ana hindi na gitna balik ang iyang paglakat. Karon okay na okay na gitna siya. Everybody has to be served. You know, irrespective whether they can afford it or you know, you just have to do it. Ang ang kalipay hindi gid maano. Hindi gid ma <laughs> hindi ko gid mahambal kay tungod nga why hindi na kami nagkuan, hindi na siya nagproblema nga kung gabi hindi na mahasol iya pagtulog. Insakto na iya pagtulog kag panggiho adlaw-adlaw nga pagpangita sa am pang adlaw-adlaw nga pangabuhi. I'm very optimistic that we'll be able to come to an agreement with the Food and Drug Administration. That's one. For this knee implant specifically, the training program is also being accelerated uh, because of our uh, talks and seminars with a lot of orthopedic surgeons. More and more of them are actually being trained on this particular procedure and implant. So as more and more doctors are using it, more and more patients will be using it. And eventually, what we would like to happen is that uh, it will be the standard as far as knee implants are concerned in the country. So we're aiming for that. You take the art of medicine, that means you might have to relieve pain and, and do all of it. Yeah. My, my life has been medicine. Don't think about the money part. Just think that you are helping your, your patients. If you are good, money will just come in the backside of it. You know, just be a good doctor. You know, to me, that's the most rewarding part of medicine. Alamin ang latest update sa lagay ng panahon ngayong araw mula sa DOST Pag-asa dito sa aming weather update.
Good morning sa Ejel. Good morning po sa lahat ng taga-subaybay ng DOS TV. Kasal ko yan, nakakaranas tayo ng maulap na may mga pagulan dito sa ating bansa, lalo sa Luzon, dahil sa epekto ng habagat kung saan panagigibayo mismo ni Bagyong Goryo. Isang bagyo na sa labas ng Philippine Area of Responsibility. Nasa west ito ng ating bansa at walang direktang epekto sa ating bansa. Base sa ating mga data, hindi papasok itong bagyong ito na sa labas ng par, hindi papasok ito at inasahan po natin kikulis ito palayo sa ating bansa patungo sa China. Yung makikita sa Visayas at Mindanao ay medyo maganda panahon kung saan nakakaranas ng bahagyang maulap hanggang sa maulap na kalangitan. Kaninang alas 4 ng madaling araw, ang sentro ng Bagyong Goryo ay nasa layong 545 kilometers east-northeast ng Tugagaraw City o 460 kilometers east ng Basco, Batanes. Bagyang lumakas ang Bagyong Goryo, ngayon nasa 105 kilometers per hour ang lakas ng hangin malapit sa gitna ng bagyo. Samantalang ang pagbukso ng hangin ay aabot sa 130 kilometers per hour. Inaasahan natin kikulis ang bagyo sa direksyong northwest sa bilis na 15 km per hour. Base sa ating forecast track, ang sentro ng bagyo ay hindi tatama sa aling bahagi ng ating bansa, kundi iti patungo sa Taiwan. At maaaring pong sa Sunday ng umaga, ang sentro ng bagyong Goryo ay nasa Taiwan at maaaring Sunday ng hapon o Monday ng umaga ay nasa, po natin, uh, nasa labas na ng Philippine Area of Responsibility ang sentro ng Bagyong Goryo. Kaya, nakataas pa rin ang Tropical Cyclone Warning Signal No. 1 kung saan makakaranas ng pagulan na may makasamang pagbukso ng hangin dito sa Batanes Group of Islands. At sa araw nito, ang um, Metro Manila, Ilocos Region, Cordillera, kasama rin ang uh, um, Central Luzon, Mimaropa at Calabarzon ay makaranas ng pagulan, dulot ng habagat, kung saan maaari magdulot ng pagbaha at pagbuho ng lupa. Samantala, ang nalabing bahagi ng Luzon, yung bu at buong Visayas, ay makaranas ng maulap na kalangitan na may mga light to moderate rains at thunderstorm. Mas magandang panahon sa Mindanao dahil inasa ko natin sa araw nito ay magiging bahagyang maulap hanggang sa maulap na papawarin na may mga isolated mga pagulan o thunderstorm. Sa susunod na tatlong araw, weekend, ay inasa natin na may pagulan dulot ng habagat. Pero pagdating ng lunes, may pagulan din tayo pero mahina ng epekto ng habagat pagdating ng lunes sa Metro Manila. At yung makita sa weekend ay medyo malamig na panahon kung saan ang pinangkataas po nasa 29 degrees Celsius. At bahagyang iinit sa, sa lunes kung saan naabot sa 32 degrees Celsius. Sa Baguio City, ay inaasang pa natin na maulan dahil sa habagat sa Sabado hanggang sa Lunes. At yung makikita na ang pinakamalamig ay aabot sa 19 degrees Celsius sa weekend. Sa Metro Cebu, umpisa na pong uh, inaasang natin na mag-umpisa ang magandang panahon kung saan ay uh, yung epekto ng uh, habagat ay, hindi, ay uh, bahagyang hihina at di na maapektuhan sa Visayas. Kaya, sa weekend hanggang sa lunes ay inaasa natin na maganda panahon maliban sa mga isolated mga pagulan or thunderstorm kadalasan sa hapon at gabi. Ganun din sa Metro Davao na patuloy na makakaranas ng maganda panahon maliban sa mga isolated mga pagulan o thunderstorm. Ang araw po ilulubog mamaya po nga 6.27 ng hapon. Sa para sa karagdagang update, i-follow at i-subscribe ang ating pag -asa, official pag-asa social media account sa Facebook, Twitter at YouTube. Bisitahin lagi ang ating pag-asa website, www.pagasa.usd.gov.ph Mula sa pag-asa, weather forecasting section, ako po, Salzar D. Aurelio. DOS TV would like to thank Filipino Creazione de Mano Incorporated. Visit their showroom at Ground Floor Lobby, PSM BFI Building, 318 Santolan Road, West Crame, San Juan City. CITAV, the world's leading source of reliable and authoritative news, views, and analysis on information about science and technology for global development. Visit their website at www.citav.net. 
And that's it for today. For more information, just log on to www.dostv.ph and visit our social media accounts. Abangan din ang update sa lagay ng panahon mula sa DOST Pag-asa tuwing alas 5 ng umaga at alas 5 ng hapon. Always remember, in progress, science is the key. Kaya sabay-sabay tayong makiisa at gamitin ang siyensya. Kami ang DOSTV, the program that delivers science for the people.